A new leaked test, which was first exposed by war, is boring, provides more evidence that the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter's demonstrated performance is inferior to the current fighters it is designed to replace. Specifically, the report finds that, in a series of 17 dogfights, the F-35 was consistently outmatched by an aging S-16. An F-35A test pilot with extensive dogfighting experience in F-16s and F-15s wrote the report, detailing his cockpit observations during the January 2015 maneuvering combat tests of the F-35 against a 30-year-old S-16 at Edwards Flight Test Center in California. The report, marked for official use only, highlighted serious concerns about the plane's performance in this key mission. One of the significant new issues raised by the report was the F-35's difficulty in sustaining energy in close and maneuvering combat, that is, the energy needed to turn and accelerate. The test pilot found this to be substantially inferior to older planes like F-15s, F-16s, and F-18s. In the tests, the F-35's maneuverability against the F-16 was so limited that it could only point quickly enough to achieve a missile shot by executing one specific maneuver. But this move consumed so much energy that if the shot failed, the F-35 would ultimately end up defensive again, which is to say, at the mercy of any opponent. The report also honed in on flight control problems in the 20 to 26 degrees angle of attack zone. Crucial for hard maneuvering, the pilot described the F-35's computer-controlled flying qualities as sluggish for evasive maneuvering and not intuitive or favorable. This echoes information in a recent report from the Director of Operational Test and Evaluation that describes severe flying quality problems in this high angle of attack region, including uncontrollable wing drop and heavy buffeting that degraded the flight control system, requiring a flight abort. The F-35, like most modern aircraft, uses fly-by-wire technology. Such technology depends on software to translate the pilot's control stick inputs into flight surface movements. According to the DOT and E report, the F-35's then-current software limited the maneuverability of the plane in an attempt to avoid placing extreme dynamic stress on the aircraft in flight. The January tests showed the new F-35 software control system changes further limited the flight controls so that the pilot could pull no more than 6.5 Gs in hard defensive turns, even though the F-35 design and contract specifications call for 9 Gs. The technical problems and combat ineffectiveness of the F-35 are fundamental to the concept and basic design of the airframe, avionics and engine as well as the acquisition schedule's extreme concurrency. The significance of these deficiencies will continue to be confirmed with more tests. As the program approaches the most demanding stage of testing and software development, the pace of uncovering serious new technical problems requiring massively expensive Pentagon, schedule slowing fixes and defense will likely industry continue defenders to of the F-35 are fond of reiterating that the program is too far along for any major changes at this point in the process. There is clearly a straightforward practical alternative to the reckless acceleration of the annual F-35 buy which could also halt the Air Force's rapid shrinking of its fighter force, simply refurbish and upgrade some of the large numbers of F-15s, F-16s, and A-10s that the Air Force is rushing off to the bunyard in the hopes of offsetting a small fraction of the F-35's costs. As for close support, combat-experienced ground controllers favor the A-10 by a huge margin over the F-35, or any other thin-skinned fast jet. A truly combat realistic close support operational test evaluating the two would quite certainly support the user's educated assessments. Equally obvious is that refurbishing any of these legacy aircraft, even ones retrieved out of the bunyard, is far cheaper than buying F-35s.